So I was doing some research for another project and uh, I was thumbing through my shelf and I noticed the Crypt of Lysandrid the Mad. And I thought it would be fun to do a quick retrospective on this, so that's what we're going to do today on Greyhog Grognard. <laughs> So the Crypt of Lysandrid the Mad is a, uh, I believe, third edition uh, era D and D adventure by Sean Reynolds. Um, it's uh, 48 pages. It's got a nice fold-out cover with maps on the inside. Um, and as the name implies, this is the uh, Crypt of a Lich. Um, who is supposedly famous in the Flaness, even though we've never heard of him before. And um, this is a, a very much of a throwback. Um, it feels like one of the early uh, uh, special uh, series of modules, S1, S2, S, you know, the, the ones that were tournaments um, and were basically problem solving. Uh, adventures, you know, where you literally, you know, how do you defeat the Manticore? How do you do this or that? You know, it's it's very much of a, a challenging the player rather than the characters, um, because you have to figure out, you know, what's the what's the math puzzle? What's you know the, that that kind of thing? Um, and there are literally a hundred encounters like that uh, that are uh, that come up randomly uh, according to a chart, I think. Um, it has been a while <laughs> so, uh, since I've read, uh, since I've actually uh, uh, run this. Um, but you know, there's there's literally a hundred different encounter areas. Um, they're broken out by different types of, of challenges. Some are puzzles and and, and so forth. Some are, are more combat oriented. Um, you know, it all depends on, on, on the specifics. And then uh, it all takes place in a uh, an extra planar uh, demi plane. And um, you know, the, you basically hop through all these different encounter areas, and depending on on which one, on which exit you go to, you know, it's it's it, it's laid out like a maze, uh, taking you to different um, uh, to different uh, encounters. And at the end, you you fight the lich, and ta da! Um, it's uh, in in that respect, you know, it feels like S one, it feels like S two. Um, Tomb of Horrors and White Plume Mountain. Um, it, it's kind of overkill on that scale, though. I mean, a hundred encounters like that, even though you're not going to go through all hundred of them, uh, admittedly, because it depends on which exit you go, and you, you kind of go like a Pinkoli machine. Um, and uh, it's just... Uh, I, it's it's not one of my favorites, I will, I will confess. Um, it's a little bit too obviously contrived uh, in, a, in that sense. Um, I don't know why this would particularly feel that way when something like uh, Tomb of Horrors or White Plume, White Plume Mountain doesn't feel like that to me. Uh, White Plume Mountain, I think, it doesn't because they, they, he specifically calls out the fact that he's testing the PCs, whereas this is doesn't you don't get that that kind of um, justification inside the thing. Uh, a couple of things in here. Uh, one of the encounter areas is deliberately supposed to be um, the ruins of former House Isle serves followers of the Elder Elemental God, um, which kind of contra almost sort of kind of contradicts what we know in um, I Use the Evil, where Eclavder Isle serves is now back with Lolth and is serving as ambassador to I Use. Um, so I, I, that's a minor niggling little point, but it, as I was flipping through it, getting ready for the video, that stood out to me. Uh, there's another uh, thing in here, which, I, watch, I won't be able to find it now. Oh, here we go. Um, the riddles and puzzles in this adventure have been carefully chosen to avoid reliance on real-world languages for their solutions. For example, there is no native of Furiondi who would know that live is evil spelled backwards. Um, I don't that in in a in an adventure that is deliberately supposed to be challenging the players rather than the characters that seems weird um, and it's directly at odds with what Gygax has said over the years about uh, that particular style of play where you're challenging the players it doesn't you know it's okay to use 
things like live is evil spelled backwards because the assumption is the the conceit is that you're actually you know the the in game that really would be um, in the common tongue and it would be an equivalent thing in the common tongue so it's kind of a it, it's just kind of weird that they 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 felt the need to call that out in the beginning of the adventure that said um, the specific uh, encounters are are fine. They're they're very well put together. Uh, each one is only a page or two, um, uh, it, or or less. I mean, here we've got a couple that are are just you know basically they're combat encounters. Uh, but you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven scattered across two pages. You know, so some of them are not uh, much. Uh, you know, are not very long at all. And especially you know when you're putting a hundred encounters into a 48 page book <laughs> you expect that uh, but the I think where this adventure really uh, becomes useful is not as written where it's an adventure and you're going through them sequentially or you know according to the map um, but to to pick out each individual one and use them elsewhere um, it, it's more like a source book of quick challenging encounters that you can really plug into uh, any number of different things. Like in a funhouse dungeon like Castle of Mount Archmage um, or, or uh, Greyhawk Ruins, you, you could use a lot of these in, uh, in different places and it would, it would work fine because they're completely modular. They're, completely des they're literally designed to be plugged into different places. So it, it's, very, um, uh, it, it's very easy to take them out and use them in your own dungeons or as you know even you could I'm sure you could turn them into random encounters uh, wilderness or dungeon encounters so um, for my money this this is a, a good book for that um, I don't think of it highly as an adventure in and of itself but as a source of a hundred well put together encounters that you can use in different places it's really great for that so that's how I would recommend uh, you view this really so anyway those are my thoughts on this um, let me know what you think in the comments quick reminder uh, members of the patreon get to see these video two weeks in advance so if you want to see that uh, advanced uh, notice uh, you will find the link to the patreon below and other than that let me know what you think of uh, this module uh, how have you used it in the past how do you agree with me about using it more for a source book than um, uh, than as an as written adventure uh, let me know and uh, hope you all have a great day and I will talk to you later thanks for watching today's video please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel Below you'll find links to my Patreon which helps make these videos possible. You'll also find the web store where you can buy my books, and my blog where you'll find all sorts of free downloads and other articles. Thanks and have a great day.